After learning about MySQL all this time, it's now time to connect our Python app with MySQL. So now we're not only running SQL queries directly in this app, now we're connecting it with our Python app. So instead of storing all the information in Python variables, and if you just quit and restart your Python application, and all your data is gone, now you can store all your data in your Python app. So this acts like the most fun video, like the most exciting video for me, and probably for you also, because now we're connecting Python with a database. For that, you have to open your favorite text editor. Now I'm opening Visual Studio Code over here. If you want to download, you can see the link in the description. But if you want, you can use your Python shell or any other app you want. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. Now for that, first of all, we have to import a module, a module called MySQL Connector Python. With the help of that module, we will be able to connect our Python app with the MySQL database. Now you probably will be familiar how you can import modules. It's like import math like that. So import math. So for we have a library called import MySQL dot connectors like this. But this will not work yet because the math module over here already comes with your Python. So when you install Python, you're already going to get this math module. But the module we're going to install is MySQL connector. And this module doesn't come with Python, you have to separately install it. And for separately installing it, you have something called pip. Now pip is a package manager, where you can download external libraries. So not only libraries that come with Python, you can also download some external libraries. So for that, you have to open your terminal. Now you can also use your Visual Studio Code terminal for opening that just go to terminal and new terminal over here. And you can see a new terminal is opened. Now if you're not using Visual Studio Code, then probably you're not going to have terminal in your app, like the Python shell. So over there probably you don't have a separate terminal like this. So you have to open a new window, just go to a command prompt or terminal, both of them are same. And then now you can see I'm in my home directory to going to another directory, like where your code is located. So if you see, if I go to reveal in finder, you can see my code is located in the documents folder, in the code, then school, then my SQL with Python. So you can see this is my folder structure. So in the terminal also, you have to go to that exact same location. So for that, just type CD and then documents then code, then school, and then MySQL with Python. But over here, you can see we have MySQL space with space Python. So you have space. Now, if you have space in your directory, just put quotes, and then write your directory name in between. So MySQL with Python. And now you can see now I'm in the documents folder, in the code folder, school folder, and my SQL with Python folder. Now you can see in this folder, I have the main.py file and simple DB program.py file. So if I type ls, you can see we got our two files. That means we are in the correct directory. And now that we are in the directory, you can install your MySQL library. Now for that, I, I already told you, we need to have pip. Now pip is like, which allows you to download. Now pip by default comes with Python. So you don't have to download anything extra. So for using pip, first of all type pip. Now after writing pip, if you get an error, then you have to write pip three. Okay, so I'll just type pip and space dash dash version. I get like this, but if you type pip three and dash dash version, Again, you get less. So you can either type pip or pip3. Now, if, if pip doesn't work for you, then you can use pip3. Now, if pip works for you, then you can continue using that. I'm going to use pip3 for now. So how to install is you have to just type pip3 or pip whatever, install, and then the name of the library. You can download any library you want, 
But now we are downloading a library which helps us to connect with our MySQL database. So the name of the library is MySQL hyphen connector hyphen Python. So what you have to do is first of all use the pip3 or pip then install an, a library then you have to install this library and then press enter. Now you can see I got requirement already satisfied because I already downloaded this a little bit earlier. So you'll not get like this kind of output you'll get an, a different output like downloading library or something like that. So just make sure you, you have downloaded it. If you get some errors then you can just google it or if you want you can ask in the comment section down below but you're probably not going to get error first of all go to your, go to your directory the correct directory and then do the pip install and now in this directory our python library that is the mysql connector python library is installed perfectly and after installing now we can use import so now the python has access to that library so now we can use import and then mysql dot connect like that so now we got a library over here now this library gives us some things you can use like the connection object now the connection object is like very important with that object only you can connect with your mysql database so how do you connect is just type mysql dot connector dot connect and then open the brackets this is how you connect with your database but not only this you have to specify your host name username your password and also which database you want to connect now first of all let's start with the host name so host is equal to then what now if you are using mysql with some cloud server then you have to type the ip address of that now if you were following this course then probably you're not using an external mysql place your mysql database is safe locally in your laptop or your computer whatever so then for that case you have to just type localhost now if you don't worry if you don't know what is localhost localhost is means just like the ip address of your own laptop so how you can connect the database with your own laptop so because the database is stored locally on my laptop so just type localhost as the host and then your user now the user is probably going to be root if you didn't change it while installing but while installing if you change the username then just use that if you did not change then by default it's root and then you have to type your password so password actually not password you have to just write like this this is your password but you have to write P A S S then W D the short form and then you have to type your password now I'm not going to reveal my password so I'll just write some dummy password out here just to show you and then later on I'll pause the video and put my original password and hide this line over here so just like maybe demo password now don't type demo password you have to type your exact password what you did while installing your mysql server and then you have to type this, the name of the database you want so database now i want to connect my shop database over here so i'll just type shop so this is how you do it now you can see i'm writing mysql.connector.connect so whenever i have to use this library I have to type this long thing mysql.connector so what I can do is I can use alias so like import mysql.connector as sql term so this is like the convention then instead of writing this whole thing again I can just type sql term so it's much shorter so over here you can see my password now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of lines and just scroll over you over here and then I'll type my real password and then I'll show you the output because I don't want to show my password over here so let me type my real password okay I type my real password and if you scroll up you can actually see my password so now once you write that once you connect it you can just press run 
if you go to your MySQL, then nothing should happen because we didn't execute any query. But to see if our connection was successful, you can just type SQL, not SQL. Term. Now actually, you have to store this, this connection object in a variable because this gives us access to many properties and methods. So what you have to do is just store it in a variable. So I'm just going to call maybe connection. Connection like that is equal to this. Now connection looks kind of long. I'll just type like maybe con. So it means connection. Now again, I'll type my real password and run this Python file. Okay, so I just saved this file and going to run it. You should not see any error. Now to see if our connection was successful, like we were successfully connected to the MySQL database using Python, then the connection object we just created gives us access to is connected like this. It's a function, so just put parentheses like this. So now this thing, this part will return either true or false. True means it is connected and false means it is not connected. So to check it, if it's connected or not, the best way is to use if. So if, then this condition. So, you know, the if needs either true or false to, if it is true, then it will run what is inside over here. If it is false, it won't run. So now this will return either true or false. So if it returns true, that means our connection was successful. So then we can just type over here, the connection with the database was successful. Like that. And then you can just run this part and you can see the connection with the database was successful. So now we successfully connected with our database. So now let's execute some query and let's see if it's actually making changes. So now the connection object we got over here earlier. So remember we made that connection object and just type connection dot execute query. So an underscore execute underscore query like this and then open the parenthesis. And then as a string, you have to specify your query. So maybe we can do like create table test. And then maybe the first column is an integer and its name is ID. So you can see we have, if I refresh, you can see we have just customers, employees, orders and pets table. Now I'm going to create a table called test like this. So con dot execute query. And then you have to specify a query as a string. So in my case, it's just like create table test. And then you have to specify it, obviously. So this is just raw SQL. So I'm going to save it and run this part. Again, you should see the connection was successful. And let's see if that table was created. So I'm going to refresh. And you can see the test table was created. So it's really cool. I'm so happy now. So you can see we successfully ran the query inside of our Python app. And then we made changes to the database. So it's really cool. It's really nice. So this is how I actually do it. Now, like I'm going to show one more method how you can do it. And that method, you're probably going to use it. So this one was just for showing. Now you have to not use this type of query. You have some other method how you can execute the query. But this was just for showing. So now we have learned how you can execute a query and seeing visual like visual feedback that our table was created in the database we connected. So now our Python app is connected with the database. So now let's execute one more query. I'm going to call it drop table. So drop table and then test. Run this query and I'm going to refresh it. You can see the test table was deleted or dropped. Perfect. Now this is actually not how you execute query. So now there is something called cursor, a database cursor. Now I'll explain that a bit later, why we need cursor and what is a cursor actually. But first let's actually create a cursor and execute the query again. So I'm just going to type connection dot cursor like this. So cursor is a function, just, just type connection dot cursor like this. Now this returns us the database cursor. So we can store it in a variable. So cursor like that. 
and now this cursor gives us access to some functions like executing query so cursor dot execute and then same thing actually how we did last time so create a table like that so this is how actually do it first of all you have to create a database cursor like this and then using that cursor what you stored in the variable you have to cursor then dot execute and then you have to specify your query like create table like that that's how you do it now what is a cursor now last time we didn't use cursor so what we did was we did like connection dot execute query we did like this and then we specified our query so now if you do like select everything from maybe the customers table customers table so now if you run this we should not get any output in the terminal because we didn't print anything so if you print only we'll get some output right like we got over here the connection was successful so now this so what happens is when we actually run this query we're going to get all our customers right so we're going to get all our customers like this now what happens is when you execute the query in this manner without creating a cursor then all of this information you'll directly get in your python app then you cannot loop through this so you're going to get like this one, like one whole object you'll not be able to traverse or do anything row by row so maybe you want like while printing so i'll just show you this demo application i made it over here you can over here you can see i'm printing row for data you can see data.cursor.fetch all so I'm printing the data, I'm looping through it, and then I'm producing output like this. So you cannot loop through it, you cannot traverse it. So that's the problem with if you don't use cursor. So you're going to get at once. So when you run the query, so that query gets executed in the database, and then the output is going to be sent in one go. So you're not going to get like row, row, row like this. So you're not going to get first row, second row, third row, fourth row. So you're not going to get this, you're just going to get like one object like one whole thing so processing it or looping through it traversing to it or whatever doing like row by row things is really difficult or maybe probably you can't do that so for that you have database cursor the database cursor what it will do is when we execute the query it will allow us to do row by row functions like for each row what you can do so you have to always use cursor so this method we are not going to use it now don't worry if you didn't understand why we are using cursor just remember that you have to always use cursor and now cursor.execute select everything from customers so you got like this so now it's going to select everything from the customers so if you run the file and you can see you'll not get any output in the mysql workbench app that's because we're just selecting it, right? Why will we get output over here? So if you want to see the output, what you have to do is first of all, when you execute the query, you have to just type cursor dot fetch or like that. So what's happening is, first of all, you have to execute the query. And when you execute this query, you're going to get all the customers, right? And you're going to get the customers as a list. So this will be the first item, this will be the second item, this will be the third item, this will be the fourth item, etc. And this whole thing as a list. And each item will be as a tuple. So this custom ID, so 1, Hansen, Ola, 32, 3983 and all that, Hansen at example.com. All of this will be saved, will be as a tuple. And all of this tuple will be in a list. So I'll just show you what happens. So when you get this list, so when you do fetch all, you're going to get all the results what you get from over here. So now over here, we're getting all the customers. So when you do fetch all, you're going to get all the customers row by row. And this fetch all returns us the rows. So we can store it in a variable. So we can store like data. And then we can just do like print data. So let's, I'll just show you what we did again. We're going to create a cursor object. So connection.cursor. And then that cursor object allows us to do one row at a time processing. And then we can just type like cursor.execute and then our query. 
Now, the, if the query returns something like over here in our case, it returns all the customers. So now if you want all the customers, you can use cursor.fetch all. Now, cursor.fetch all is going to return everything what's going to be executed in this query. So in this query, we're going to get all the customers. And those customers will be saved in the cursor object. And then you can just use cursor.fetch all. And this thing is going to return us all the customers. This is just going to run the query. It is not going to give us all the customers. So once we run this query, we're going to get the output in the cursor. And then we can just use cursor.fetch all to get all our data. And that data has to be stored somewhere, obviously. So we can store it in the a variable and then just print that variable. So this data is going to contain all our customers. So I'm going to save it and run this file again. And you can see we got all our customers. You can see as a list we got the first item is a tuple. So one Hansen Ola 32 and his number and his email. And then we got a comma. And then because this is the another element. And then again we got a tuple. So second Alan Adams and all that. Then again we got another tuple third Muhammad Dawood. So you can see we got each of the item as a tuple. And there's all the list of the tuples. That is all the customers we got in a list. So that was really cool. And now actually once now we got this data and you can see we got it as a list. So you can traverse to the list and give us much better output. So I can do like for row in data. So now each of this will be a row. So this will be a row. This will be a row. This will be a row like that because we are looping through it. So each element is going to be a row. And then we can just do like print row. If you run this part, you can see we got a much better output. You can see the first item, second item, third item like that. So we got a better output over here. Now if you want much better output, what you can do is now this row is this whole thing over here. At each iteration, a row is going to be each one of these. So at first iteration, this will be the row. Then this will be the row. So then this will be the row like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print like this. So print ID like this. And then I'm just going to say row. Then I told like first of all, this will be the row. So row zero. So row zero will be obviously this one. So this is the ID. And then next part is the name row one. So row one will be this. So that's the name. Actually, that's the first name. So first name. Then I'm going to copy a bunch of time for last name, age, phone number and email. So last name is the third element or second index. Then we got the age. That is the third index. Then we have the phone number. fourth index and we got the email that is the fifth index so we got all of this like this and if we print this you can see we got much better output so id1 first name hansen last name ola age 32 and phone number email and then we got id2 first name last name and all that so if you want to just make it more clearer you can just type like print and maybe a new line over here and maybe a new line over here like this so you can see if I print it you can see we got much better output so we got ID 1 and all the information and then we got some new line and we got ID 2 so like this so this is how you can do it so now you can see for each row we are getting a data so we're getting a row. So you're traversing to the output. So that's actually not possible if you don't create a cursor object. So cursor object is really necessary. Now, along with fetch all, we have some other function that cursor gives us. So first of all, we're going to execute the query. And then that result we're going to get when we do cursor.fetch all. So we're going to get all our rows. If you want to count how many rows you got after fetching all. So you can do like cursor dot row count like this so it's not a function so don't put parentheses over here just cursor dot row count and this one is going to give us how many rows we have so we have to store it in a variable 
so maybe like number of rows like that and then we can just do like print number of rows and if you run this we can see we got number of rows is 9 so we got 9 rows because there are 9 customers so you can see 1 2 3 it's like we have 9 customers so we got 9 rows after fetching everything now if I do a slightly different query like where the age is greater than 30 so where the age is greater than 30 so now you can see this person is not earlier than 30 years this person is also not earlier than 30 years and also this person so we have three person who are not elder than 30 years. So obviously in our output, these three persons will not come. So out of nine, three, if you remove it, then you have only six person who are greater than 30 years, who are elder than 30 years. So now actually if we do fetch all, we're going to get only six rows because once we execute the query, it will obviously return as only six rows because only six people are elder than 30 years. So once we do fetch all, we're going to get all only the six rows we're not going to get like every single row this fetch all will return us based on the query we execute not like all the rows so in this query only six people will be there so this fetch all will return us six and obviously you can guess it like the number of rows will return six rows so just me just say so let me just save it and write it again so you can see we got oh we got four rows so actually let's see so one, two, and three. So only three people are elder than 30 years. So why are we getting only four rows? You can see first one is 32, 34, 40, and nine. So we got first item, we didn't get two, three, and four. Oh yeah, because 30 is 30 years, right? And 30 years is not greater than 30 years. So over here you can see it's like age is greater than 30 years not greater than or equal to so this one and this guy is not again being executed or not being selected because these both are 30 years but we did a condition like they should be greater than 30 years not just 30 years so my apologies so it's not like six people it's like four people so you can see we just got four people because 30 years 28 years 30 years 29 years 22 years so all of these people are not elder than 30 years so they won't be counted so they won't be there in the final output so we got an output like this so we got just four people now fetch all will return all the rows that were returned in the execute query so when we execute and then what all rows we get it's going to return all of it so you can see over here we were supposed to get four rows so this fetch all is going to return all the four rows now we also have fetch many now fetch many takes how many rows you want in the output so if I said two then we're going to get only the first two output so you can see over here we'll get only ID 1 and we'll get only ID 5 even though these two were matching this condition age is greater than 30 and if you don't put like fetch many then this execute is going to return four rows for us but if you do fetch many out of these four rows is going to return only how many you specify in our case, I specified two rows. So out of this four rows, is going to return as just two rows. So if I run this, you can see we just got two in the row count. Now actually, this is supposed to give us four rows, like last time, but now we are doing like fetch many two. So this fetch many is going to return only how many we specify. So two means it's going to return only the first two customers. So you can see we got the first one and the second one and rest all we didn't get now if I do fetch many three over here and run this part you can see we got only three rows and you got first one second one and third one so we got only three of them even though we were supposed to get four because of this fetch many now if you want to fetch only the first one you can do like this so fetch many one you can see we got only one output and the first one or there's one more function that is fetch one so if I do fetch one, that's exactly like fetch many one. So you can see if I run this, you got an error. Oh yeah, we got an error. That's because uh, I'll say why. So if I do like fetch many over here as two, for example, 
So now I'm not going to loop through this. I'm going to comment it out. And I'm just going to do like print data. So like the, all the data, how we get exactly. So now over here, you can see we're getting a list. So this fetch many and fetch all returns a list of all the items. So if I type fetch many just one, you can see again, we're getting a list over here. So that's why we were able to loop through it like for row in data because it's a list. So this whole thing, you can see square bracket and square bracket because this whole thing is a list. But if I do like fetch one, so fetch one and remove the argument. And if you run this, you can see in the fetch one, we are not getting it as a list. We're getting directly as a tuple. So in this case, we cannot loop through it uh, like for row in data. Yeah, we can loop through it. Then the first one will be this second one will be the name and all that. And then again, on top of that, we are doing like row zero. So that's not possible because before we're getting a list. So according to that, our print statement was like our, we were looping according to that, but now we're not getting a list. So if you loop in this way, then it's not possible. So you have to be careful that fetch one returns only a tuple of the first element, but fetch many and fetch all returns a list of how many elements are there. Now let's add a little more Python into our app and make this more useful. So now we can see we're doing like select all the customers where the age is greater than 30. So now if I do like select all customers where the customer ID, custom ID like this. So customer ID is equal to one, for example. So if I run this, so I'm just going to use like fetch all remove the data and uncomment this like this. And then after uncommenting out, so you should get an output, all of the customers where the customer ID is one. Now you obviously know that this is a primary key and you cannot have duplicate values. So we're only going to get the first one. So I'm just going to run this and you can see we only got the first output that is ID one and his name is Hanson, etc. So we got only the first output. Now, what if you want not only one, maybe you want depending on the user input. So if the user types three, then you want the third customer. So you want like that. So what you can do is you can obviously take input from the user. So I'm just going to do like input, which customer do you want like that? Or like enter the ID of the customer like that. So now it's going to ask it and whatever user types, we're going to get it in the output is going to return it. So we can just store it in a variable. So maybe customer ID like that. So just like this. So now this custom ID. Now what we want is instead of one, we want what the user typed custom ID. So one way to do is to use adding the string like concatenating the strings. So we can do like this customer ID. So now over here, what's going to happen is first of all, I'll copy this for showing you and I'm going to comment it out. So this thing is what going to do is, is going to add this first string. So over here, you can see the first string plus the second string, oops, plus the second string. So the first string is select everything from customers where the customer ID is equal to. And then what's the second string? What the user type? So if the user types like three, then it's going to be three over here. So both of these are going to be added. So instead of like this, so once you add the both of these, it will be like this. So if the customer types number three, then it's going to be number three over here. So you're adding the first string with the second string. Now this adding string is not part of SQL. It's just pure Python. So you can see over here, this is just normal Python. It's not like in, only in SQL, you can add two strings. Adding two strings is just part of Python, not SQL. So over here, you can see, select everything from customers where customer ID is equal to, and then what the user types in. So actually just run this part and you can see it asked me for a customer. So if I type, for example, customer ID three, then we should get Muhammad. So if I just type custom ID three, yes, we got correct. We got correct output. 
so let me run it again and maybe i want like the fourth customer so i can just do like fourth customer and yes we got ram so we got correct output so now you can see we just made our program a bit more useful now instead of adding two strings like this there's also one more nice part which python gives us to easily format strings like this now that's actually part of python not part of sql so just for showing you i'm going to select everything and i'm going to comment it out so this whole part is not going to be run so if you see if i run this you should not get any output in the terminal because this whole part is now commented so now we'll just start fresh because i want to show you one thing about python it's about python okay it's not about sql so it's called string formatting or template strings so what i'm going to do is i'm going to store a string in a variable so maybe like my string something like that my string and then i'm just going to type our string like this so maybe my name is then two brackets you can see an opening bracket and a close bracket a curly bracket so now this my name is opening and closing brackets so now this is actually a placeholder so where you can store something and then after you type the whole like the whole string you can just type like format and then in the bracket you can specify the the bracket value so if i type like sayed basim over here okay we didn't get any output because i didn't print it so print my string you can see we got my name is sayed basim so you can do like this also and you can have as many brackets you want and like this so my name is sayed basim my age is again a bracket opening and closing bracket and then as a second argument you have to specify what you want so 16 for example so now if i run this you can see my name is said basim and my age is 16 so my name is so instead of this open and closing brackets is going to be substituted by said basim and then for the second one is going to substitute with the second one so this is how you can actually format strings now let's actually take input from the user and make it more useful so like this so name maybe i can do like input enter your name like this and then age maybe we can do like enter your age now if this age is number like i don't have to convert it into an integer because it doesn't mind if it is integer or a string anyway it's going to be added into the final string so i'm not going to like put into it here like that so I'm just going to leave it as simple as possible. And then as the first one, you can see we wrote Sayed Basim. Now instead of Sayed Basim, I'll type name. So now this variable over here. So whatever the user types, that will be stored in the name variable. And that name variable is the first argument. So whatever the user types, it will replace this one. And for the second one, it's age. So I'm going to put age over here. So once it asks for the age, it's going to be stored in the age variable. And that age variable, you can just put it over here. Now the second part is going to be replaced by the age. And that age is what the user inputs. So if I just run it and like, what is your name? So I'm just going to type like some random name. And for age, I'm going to put like maybe 30 years. You can see my name is that random name. And then my age is 30 years. So this is how you can format string. I know it looks much uglier when you compare to adding the strings together like last time how we added strings like this but this will be helpful if you have like so many addition so now let's actually do the same thing without using template string so i'm just going to comment it out and if i do like my string is equal to like my name is and then plus name plus then space we have to add sorry uh a full stop and space like my age is then space then plus age like that sorry and like that so if i run it it will ask for the name and it will ask for the age you can see we got the same output like this actually looked way more neater you can see we got my name is then, sp then space then we are just closing the string and we are adding like plus name plus this so it's like it's so confusing but over here you can see we're just writing like one whole string so my name is something and my age is something so this is actually way more easier to read 
So I'm going to be using this method over here. Now again, I'm saying this format and all that is part of pure Python. It's not like SQL gives us this functionality. It is just in Python. If you use SQL or not, you can use this format string. Now there's one more thing actually, if you want to name your brackets. So over here, I'm just going to put like name and I'm going to put over here age. So in this case, what I have to do is, I have to do like name is equal to. So name is equal to what? Name is equal to this name. So I'm going to put this name over here. So now for you, for not confusing, I'm just going to put like input name. And over here, I'm going to put like input age. So what I have to do is name. So this name is equal to input name like that. And then the age is equal to input age. So like this. So either if you want the name, you can put like directly the name as a string you can put, or if you want to take after the user input, you can do like this. So name is equal to an input name and age is equal to input age. So you can do like this, but that's helpful if you have a lot of them. But in this case, we have just two of them. So I'm not going to put all that because again, you can see we're adding a lot of code over here. So I'm just going to make it short like this. So the first bracket is going to be replaced by the first one. The second bracket is going to be replaced by the second one. So over here, if I run this part, it should get us the same output. Okay, now let's get rid of this Python code we wrote over here and select everything and uncomment it out. So now it's not commented out. So if I run this, you can see, enter the ID of the customer if I type seven, you're going to get the seventh customer. So now instead of adding strings, we'll use format. So I can just do like, like this, and then dot format. Then I'm going to specify what I have to do. So over here, the customer ID, like this. So we actually run this. You see, you got the correct output. So now this part is working. So this is how you execute select queries. So select everything from dash dash. And so whatever you want to select, you can do like that. Now let's do some other queries like inserting into or deleting update and all that. So now let's actually, instead of selecting everything, I'm going to do update. Cursor dot execute and then inserting into something. So you can see in our table, in our customers table, maybe I want to insert the 10th customer. Sorry, it's like insert into customers. And then we have to specify the name of the columns we have to specify. So customer ID, first name, last name, age, phone number and email. So maybe I just want to insert customer ID first name. So you have to write it exactly how it is because this is SQL. So last name and then we got maybe the age. So maybe I don't want to type the phone number and the email. So I'll just type like this and I'm just going to do like values. So the custom ID, I'm going to put 10. First name, I'm going to put like maybe Syed. Oops. Syed like this. Now over here, the problem is, you can see if I type this, if I, if you see this whole thing, I'll copy it and put it over here in the SQL workbench. It is like this. But if you remember, we used to do like this. So whenever we had a string, we used to enclose it in quotes like this. So say it over here. Now, if I enclose it in the quotes like this again, you can see the problem is, the Pyth Python is going to assume that, okay, so it starts from over here and all the way it ends over here. So now the Python assumes that it starts from here and ends from here. So this is one string and this is something else. And then this is one string. So it's not being executed the way we want. So for that, you can put double quotes over here. So now Python is going to see like, okay, the, the string starts from here, the double quotes and ends over here in double quotes. The single quotes is part of the string. So Python is go not going to give us error. So now we can 
do it like this. So first name is Sayyid, second name is Basim, and then the age is 16 years, like this. Now for 16, I didn't put quotes. That's because 16 is a number and age is a number. So I'm not going to put quotes over there. As well as over here, you can see for ID, we didn't put quotes. So now once we execute this query, this fetch all should not give us anything because we got fetch all last time because we selected everything. So now we all the customers we got. But if we insert something into the customers table, obviously we will not get any output. So this fetch all is not necessary. So this whole thing is actually not necessary. So I'll just commit this whole thing out. And this one also, the select query. And also this one, the input. So now after creating the cursor, we're just executing cursor or execute insert into customers and this whole our query again. So now it should insert this customer. So if I run this, you can see the connection was successful and you can see we didn't get any output because we didn't do any print statement. So if we execute this query, so what should happen is if I run this query again, I should get the new customer, right? So let's see if we get it. So if I run this, you can see we didn't get the new customer. So we, we run this query, so we executed the query and our query looks correct and we added the correct values also. We didn't get any customer in the MySQL workbench or in our database. Now why we didn't get is whenever we make some changes to the database, like changes to the table, maybe like table name or inserting a new values or deleting any value or updating something. So if you do anything like that, then what we have to do is we have to use commit. So we have to do like connection, oops, connection dot commit like that. So now what happens over here is first of all, we're going to execute the query. And if that query makes changes to our database, now over here earlier, we were just selecting. So we were just reading all what was there in the database. So we didn't make any changes to the database. But now over here, you can see the like insert into customers. So we are inserting a new value. So we were making some changes to the database, some changes to the table. So in that case, what you have to do is you have to do like connection.commit. It's not cursor.commit, it's connection.commit. So our connection object, so what we created earlier. So first of all, we have to execute the query. And if that query makes any changes, then we have to commit that changes in the connection. So connection.commit. So now this part is should actually give us the desired output. So now again, you can see we didn't get any output in the terminal because we didn't do any print statements. But over here, if I run this whole query, you can see we got the 10th customer. That is Syed Basim, age 16, and phone number and email we didn't specify, so it's not there. So this is how you can insert into something. Now, if you want to delete the last one, you can do like that also. So I'll do like, delete oops delete from customers where customer is equal to 10 so now this is actually like pure sql so you can do like delete from customers table where the customer id is equal to 10 so it's going to delete this one so now again you have to commit it if you don't commit nothing will happen so i'll just show you if you run and if you run this whole query again, you can see Sayyid Basim was not deleted. But if I just commit it, run this part again, you can see the 10th customer that is Sayyid Basim was deleted. So if you want to delete, update or insert something, you have to always commit changes. Now let's actually create a very small program which takes input from the user and gives us the output. Like uh, last time over here, like over here we did like if you remember we did so i'll just go back 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 so we did like this so now what i want you to do is is going to ask customer id the name the last name as well as the age and the phone number and email if you want from like the python in like in the terminal like a user input and it's going to take that user input and going to add this in the string or in the like in the string and it's going to run this whole query. So I want you to make a program like that. So just pause the video and make a program like that. 
So if you want some demo, I'll just show over here. Now this is actually your homework. So you have to make like this. So over here you can see what do you want to do. Now first of all, I'll just quit this query and clear the output over here. And then I'm going to run this part again. So I'm just run. You can see it's like, what do you want to do? So if I want to add a customer, just press one. Now this is your homework. Once we finish this whole video, I want you to do this. So like if I press one, it will ask for customer ID. So maybe like customer ID 10, first name Syed, last name Basim, age is 16 or 17. And then phone number, just some random phone number and email maybe Syed at example dot com like that if I press enter now this is actually added to the table so if I run this whole table again you can see a new table was added so now this is actually a menu driven program I want you to do it later but for now I just want you to do only the first functionality that is adding customers so I want you to do only just the adding customers part so pause the video and do it now Okay, I hope you did it and if you had some problems then don't worry I'll show you how to do it now first of all you can see we have a lot of comments over here so I'll just scroll to the bottom and write it over here so we got a clean area and then I'm just going to do like cursor.execute now before that we have to take user input right so what all names you want so first of all I'm just going to do like customer ID enter customer ID like that and then it's going to ask for first name last name age phone number and email so this is first name last name age phone number and email like that so enter customer ID enter first name enter last name enter age enter phone number and then in the last we have enter email like this so what we have to do now is like insert into customers then custom id first name last name age and then we have like phone number so phone number like this and then email email and then insert into values all of these now we are not going to insert like this we're going to insert it based on the output so we have to do like insert values and then we have to do like open and close the curly brackets so this is the id now and then the first name so now you know the first name is a string so you have to do it like this now why are we doing it like this because the first name for example the first name someone type like Syed so what is going to do is um, is going to replace this whole bracket so if we had like this then it's going to replace this whole bracket by Syed so it's going to be like this but you know that we have to put string like this because we're adding a string to the database so in that case if we put like open and close brackets like open and close curly brackets in a string like this so string and then the brackets then it's going to replace this brackets with what we type so Syed for example so now you can see we're getting the desired output so whenever we're inserting a string just put quotes and then opening and closing brackets so that's for the first name and then we got the last name that is also a string so opening and closing brackets and like this oops and then we got last name so we insert a last name and then we got the age so age now age is a number so no need to put quotes and then we got phone number phone number is also a number and then we got email now email is a string so, so i'm just going to put like email like that so now this should actually run it for us so we're going to first of all we're going to take all the input from the user and then we're going to execute this query so insert into customers customer id so the first one is customer id and then first name last name age phone number email and then we have to format it of course so format so what's the first bracket represent it represents customer id so i'm just going to put customer id as the first one 
and then the second bracket is for first name so I'm just going to put over here first name and the, we know that the next one is the last name so last name and then again the next one is the age next one is phone number next one is email oops email like that so now we formatted the string so now if you run this it's going to ask for it's going to ask us a bunch of questions and then it's going to run this whole query so I'm just going to clear the terminal and run this so first of all it's going to ask customer ID so customer ID may be 12 we already have Sayed Basim so I'm just going to put like first name I don't know just some random name then last name age maybe 80 years phone number some random oops after I put numbers so some random number email name at example.com now I think this number is quite big so we are probably going to get error yeah okay so we didn't get any error so no problem so you can see we inserted a new item so we got the 12th ID because we typed ID 12 and then we got first name last name age phone number and email now we got first name and last name because this is how we enter so first of all this part is actually for adding the person so if you want you can store it in a function so I'm just going to store it in a function like this so def maybe insert new customer and then we're going to store everything over here like this so like this so now if I just run this function so insert new customer I should actually it should ask the same question so now I can create a mini driven program also so I can do like input no, I'll just do like print one as insert new customer print two as delete customer like that and then we can do like if no we have to first take the input from the user enter the number like that and We have to store it in a variable of course so choice so if choice is equal to equal to one because input returns a string so you have to put like string one then we have to call this function so insert new customer so insert new customer like that lf choice is equal to two then we can create a new function maybe so def delete function so sorry delete customer and actually let's actually write the logic for deleting customers so how you can delete it first of all we need the customer id so we can do like customer id is equal to an in input enter the customer id and then what we have to do is you have to just execute the query like cursor dot execute delete from customers where customer ID is equal to and then opening and closing curly brackets and then we can just format it like this so format so the first bracket is customer ID so copy this and paste it over here and then obviously we have to commit it because we are making changes so connection dot commit like this and it should delete it delete it for us so now if the choice is two then we can just do like delete customer function so if I run this file it's going to ask if you want to insert a new customer or delete the customer I want to delete the customer so number two so now it's going to ask for customer ID so I want to delete the 16th customer so 16 ID like this and if I run the whole query again you can see 16th one was gone now I'll remove the 12th one also because the name doesn't make sense so I'll just run this whole thing again and delete the customer customer ID 12 refresh 
and you can see the customer 12th was also deleted so this is how you delete insert and also if you want you can do like update so like update maybe you want the name to change so if you want to update any value so if you remember from the update section in this whole course like how you can update it so you have to just run the whole query again and you can if you want you can take a user input from the user so now it's time for the homework so this is actually the program i've created earlier so this is what i want you to do so i'll just remove it and of course i have to run the file so i'll just scroll a bit down and run the file over here so if you want to add a new customer just press number one and then customer id for example like 10 not 10 is already there so 12 first name maybe hi last name maybe hello age maybe 20 years old phone number some random number and email is maybe hello at example.com like that so now it added a new customer for us so if i run this query again you can see we got a new customer now if i clear the terminal and run this whole part again you can see we got read customers so if i press like number two for reading customers you can see we got all the customers so we got like the first customer that is hansenola second one is alan adams and if you just scroll down you can see we got a hi hello also so it's reading from the database like that and now we got just run this whole part and update so number three for update so enter the customer id you would like to edit so i want to edit maybe the 12th one and uh, so 12th customer id and enter the field to edit so what field i want to edit so i want to maybe edit the first name field so now maybe the email field for example so i'm just going to type email actually email with a capital e because you can see over here over here is capital e so you have to type exactly how it is and then enter the new value for this field so now over here we have like hello at example.com maybe i want like hi at example.com so at example.com and now it's changed so if i run this just see over here instead of hello at example.com it's going to be hi.example.com you can see we got hi.example.com so we had updated the customer and now for deleting the customer i'm just going to run this whole part again and you can see four is for deleting enter the customer id you want to delete so number 12 and the customer will be deleted if you run this whole part again you can see our hi hello person is gone so i want you to create this particular menu over here 